As it is known, the Rambam was the king's personal doctor. Some of the king's high-ranking officials were jealous that the Yid, this Jew, was honored this position when there were many other professional Muslim doctors around. The king would respond that there is no other doctor that has the capabilities and expertise that the Rambam does. But they insisted, and there were very proficient Muslim doctors as well. So the king agreed to a test. The Rambam and the renowned Muslim doctor would be the contestants. Each one would give the other one poison to drink, and whoever can heal himself from the poison has proved himself to be the best doctor in the country. So the Gentile doctor gave the Rambam the poison first, and the Rambam, with his wisdom, was able to save himself. He prepared his students with remedies, and they gave it to him and healed him from the poison. Now, it was the Rambam's turn to give the poison to the Gentile doctor. The doctor drank his drink, and he died a few days later. The king called for the Rambam and wanted to know what he did to the Muslim doctor. The Rambam said, Chas ve shalom, I didn't give him poison. I would never do that to another human being. It was just water. But the doctor was so afraid that he died from fear. We can add that the Rambam knew that the doctor could heal himself from the Rambam's potential poisons, but when the potion was water, the Gentile doctor didn't know what it was or what to expect. He became very afraid until he died from fear. Fear is a poison. It can be more dangerous than the illness and the dangers themselves. Powerful story. And it's true even for today with what's happening in the world. Stress kills, uh, viruses kill, conspiracy theories kill, our wives kill. <laughs> okay, that last one was a bit of a joke. Shout out to all the Eish uh, Chayel, the women who bring the light and the peace and joy into the homes. So, so many things befall us. But why? Could it be because of our own actions? Rabbi Nachman of Breslov teaches that when a person sins and fails to do subsequent teshuva, repentance, he succumbs to fallen fears. He begins to be afraid of policemen, disease, thieves, the IRS, and other number of fearing opposing agents. Why? If he would have feared Hashem, then he'd have made teshuva, confessing, apologizing, and asking Hashem to help him mend his ways. But since he has not made teshuva, the negative spiritual forces created by his misdeeds manifest themselves in a number of fear-imposing agents which come back to torment him. As such, a person's misdeeds and his lack of teshuva are the very things that cause him so much anguish in life. So true. So, as I said, we have many things that can cause fear into our lives, right? Physically and spiritually kill us. We have to stop and reflect. Um, we have to examine ourselves. Talk to Hashem, who is greater than all of our fears. So it is for this reason that the term fear not, al tira is the most common phrase in the Torah. It's actually repeated 80 times to remind us. There is many things to fear in life, but we need to be reminded. Hashem reminds Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the generations, and he even tells us today, al tira, do not fear. Now, do not fear the Egyptians. Do not fear Amalek. Do not fear the Hasatan. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Yeshua himself says, Do not fear those who kill the body, but are powerless to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. This is Hashem. So now we have a different kind of fear we're dealing with. A fear that is like none of, 
of the other fears. A fear of the creator of our souls. Hashem. Hashem, he is the owner of our soul. We don't own our own soul. We only own the body, which is the vessel. So we have to fear the king of kings, the Ribono Shel Olam, master of the universe. Baruch Hashem. So imagine a king who is so joyful. He has received, he has his finest wine. And he decides to share it with the kingdom's civilians. So he told everybody to come with their cups in hand at the gate and line up. And he's going to give everybody a taste of his finest, precious wine. So he fills a few cups, and you're next. And you come up with your cup, and inside it's filthy with scum, dirty, hasn't been washed in a long time. And the king's about to pour, and he looks in, and he's shocked. How could you, how could you bring this cup with my finest wine? How, what do you expect me to pour my finest wine in this cup? How insulting this is. You wouldn't get any wine. Right? Same with Hashem. When we appear before Him, He will see our vessel, whether we are clean or not. Okay? Let us make Teshuvah like King David. In Tehillim 51, I'll quote a few verses. Verse 3, it says, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your kindness. According to your great mercies, erase my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly of my iniquity and purify me of my sin. Verse 12, create for me a pure heart, O God, and renew the steadfast spirit within me. Verse 13, do not cast me away from before you and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. And he goes on. He prayed to Hashem. He fell before Hashem and he cried out before Hashem. He made teshuva. He who kneels before Hashem can stand before anyone. Just like Daniel did in the lion's den. Or better yet, when he refused to bow down before the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had put up. He feared Hashem more than the king. And there's a famous saying, fear no one but the one. Okay? So with this in mind, I will leave you with a few verses from the Jewish anointed Brit Chadashah. Right? Even Paul, Rabbi Shaul, recognized this with all the trials and tribulations that he had in his life. He recognized this. Romans 8, 38 to 39, it says, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our weary, worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen? And one more. In conclusion, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55, Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the sin draws its power from the Torah. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. So my dear brothers, stand firm, immovable, always doing the Lord's work as vigorously as you can, knowing that united with the Lord, your efforts are not in vain. Till next time. Shalom.